Next on Worcester News tonight, a look inside one Worcester Public Schools new state-of-the-art million-dollar facility. Plus, hockey is coming to Worcester less than one day until the Railers drop the puck. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Katherine Andrioli. More on those stories in a minute, but first, a Worcester man changes his plea after allegedly using money from illegal drug activities to purchase properties here in Worcester. According to the Telegram, Kevin A. Perry Jr. pled guilty in U.S. District Court to charges including money laundering, making a false statement in a loan application and fentanyl distribution. Perry was arrested earlier this year after one of his alleged customers went to police. He is facing a maximum sentence of life in prison and more than $15 million in fines. He will be sentenced on January 11th. A local doctor speaking out about tightening restrictions on assault rifles. Dr. Michael Hirsch brought the, brought the goods for guns buyback to the city. He's now supporting a ban on selling bump stocks. The device Las Vegas gunman Stephen Paddock used to open rapid fire on a crowd, killing 58 people and injuring more than 400. Dr. Hirsch says there needs to be more on restricting these devices. For whatever reason, the appeal of uh, people to make real what they do when they play Call of Duty or what they do when what they see in these very uh, non-realistic movies where people are just, you know, holding two automatic weapons at the same time and, and, and shooting up the whole countryside, they want to have it happen for real. They want to go out and they want to feel that experience and that thrill of shooting multiple, multiple uh, rounds in a very short period of time. I think any country that allows that to happen in domestic hands where there's not a military need or not a police connection is asking for tragedies like Las Vegas to happen. Students and faculty at Nelson Place School say they're enjoying the 2017 school year so far in their brand new $58 million building. The new building is more than 100,000 square feet and can accommodate 600 students. The old school was demolished and replaced with a new state-of-the-art equipment and facilities. The principal says they're thrilled to have these new resources and technology that's much needed for most of the curriculum. I must say that I Sorry. am probably the luckiest principal in Worcester, if not Massachusetts, to have a state-of-the-art building. Um, it's pre-K to six. Um, we have some very outstanding features here that, of course, we never had in the other building. Um, I almost feel like we went from like 1950 to 2018 in a matter of months with all the changes that here and updates that happened. Kids have options of where they want to. And the project, funded by the state, is in its final construction phases. The city of Worcester put $25 million into building the new school. The Worcester Railers are now counting down the hours until the team's opening night. The players were on the ice this morning for practice. And as our Brittany Schaefer explains, the team is full of excitement and ready to drop the puck. Well, the big weekend has finally arrived. Worcester will be seeing its first professional hockey game since 2015, and the team says they're ready to play. The Worcester Railers hit the ice for their last practice before their opening game on Saturday night. President Mike Myers says there's been a year and a half of anticipation building up to this game. Unveiling of the logo and the name on April 3rd, uh, a year and a half ago, to uh, you know putting our you know tickets on sale, to all those things that just happened uh, step by step. There's so many things that happen along the way to get to this point. Friday, crews were working on some final details at the DCU Center. Uh, the dasher boards are going up, the, uh, making sure the ice is all set, making sure all the video boards with our brand new video screen is ready to go. There's a sense of energy and excitement and nervousness and, and uh, oh God, what did we forget? It's been coming to the rink and trying to, uh, to get everything in order and get everybody on the same page. Also preparing for their grand opening is the Railer Sports Tavern on Commercial Street. It feels like a bar that's been there forever and you walk in, you, it feels homey. It's got three different rooms where you can feel a different vibe in each room. The food is spectacular and it's hockey themed, which means it's the best bar in Worcester. 
The team has sold more than 12,000 tickets for their opening night. Meyer says he expects the game will sell out. It's going to be uh, a packed house. If anybody's been at the DCU Center for a packed house, it's crowded, it's fun, it's lively, it's exciting. Feeling great. It's uh, I'm excited for 12,000 fans to be there and roaring. It's, there's no better feeling, that's for sure. Now the Railers kick off tomorrow night against the Manchester Monarchs at 7 o'clock. At the DCU Center, Brittany Schaefer, Worcester News Tonight. Dozens of dogs brought to Worcester from Puerto Rico are set to be put up for adoption this weekend. The Sterling Animal Shelter flew the dogs into the city Wednesday night. A Rosalind Flaherty has the story. These adorable pups are ready to find forever homes after they were rescued from the devastation in Puerto Rico. They've been through a lot. I mean, they've survived two back-to-back -back storms. A jet carrying about 200 cats and dogs flew into Worcester Wednesday night. Shelters from across New England raised close to $100,000 to fuel a jet donated by a relief organization. We actually raised the money in less than a week, which was very shocking. Sterling Animal Shelter took in more than 50 dogs and they will be up for adoption on Saturday. The animals are ready to be adopted. They're friendly, they're happy, they're they're healthy. Executive Director Lee Grady says these dogs were taken from foster homes in Puerto Rico and vaccinated prior to coming to New England. They were all vet checked when they came in. They were spayed and neutered yesterday, despite the fact that all they'd been through, they're resilient. Grady says they felt they needed to help save these dogs, and it's nice to know they will live a better life. These animals are going to be going to loving, lifelong homes that were once abandoned or unwanted. Rosalind Flaherty, Worcester News Tonight. And the shelter will be open from 10 to 4.45 tomorrow, and about 30 out of those dogs will be available. Turning now to Central Mass lawmakers are taking a closer look at the policies and procedures used by the Sex Offender Registry Board. After disturbing news about sex offenders in the state is found in a state audit, Senator Michael Moore and Representative Harold Naughton will hold a legislative oversight hearing about the Sex Offender Registry Board. According to findings from the state audit, Auditors report the Sex Offender Registry Board was unable to maintain the addresses of nearly 1,800 convicted sex offenders and to classify more than 900 sex offenders in the state. The state auditor will be there, so she will comment on their findings and how they came about that. And then our role is to find out uh, from the, hopefully the Secretary of Public Safety or the administration how this occurred how we can resolve the issue immediately, or what they've done to remedy the issue, and <clears throat> hopefully make sure it doesn't happen in the future. And the meeting will be held October 24th at the Massachusetts